Now in this question, what we are doing is we are exactly going back to again touching some more basics of percentages. Just a quick recap. It says income of A is 50% more than B. Expenditure of B is equal to savings of A. And savings of A is three times that of B. So what percentage of his income does A save? All right. So can I just put down this relation in terms of the mathematical expression? First important rule, I know total savings. What is the basic definition of saving? Income minus expenditure. What is the basic definition of saving? Total income minus the total expenditure will give you my total savings. So if my income is 100 rupees and my expenditure is 60 rupees, then I can say my saving is 40 rupees. First line of the question, income of A is 50% more than B. So income of A is 50% more than B. Agar B ne 10 rupees kamaya, to A usse 50% zada, yani kitna kamayega? 15. So that ratio will make it 3 by 2. So income of A to income of B, the ratio will be equivalent to what? 3 by 2. Next line of the question, expenditure. It says expenditure of B is equal to savings of A. This can be written like this. Expenditure of B is equal to savings of A. And savings of A is three times. Matlab, this number is three times that of B. Savings of A is three times. So I can say this number is already three times. So to equate, I have to multiply by three on this side. So considering these three relations, I want to find out the last line. What percentage of income does A save? So basically, it means I have to find out savings of A as a percentage of his total income. What percentage of his income is A going to save? So I have to find out savings of A. What is savings of A? Income of A minus the expenditure of A. What is savings of A in this case? So I know savings of A, it says savings of A is three times that of savings of B. So savings of A is three times that of B. So can I simply solve it that this relation, now this is a tricky question in terms of understanding your B, your relation for B is known. Income of A, I can substitute as Income of A can be substituted as what I can just cross multiply. I can say 2 by 3 times income of A is equal to income of B. Alright, so here again all the variables can be substituted in terms of B. But because the question is asking about the variable in terms of A, we are not in a position to answer this question. So when you are getting this kind of a tricky example where you are wasting a lot of time in getting the relations clear, First things first, always ensure that the variable which we want, can it be expressed in terms of the relation? No. So that's why I just put this question in between. So this is a kind of a question which is called as supposed to be a question which you have to leave in the exam. So always ensure that there's a lot of effort required to understand whether the question is having some kind of an error or not. And that is purely dependent on have you practiced those kind of questions before, correct? So this kind of questions prefer to leave. This cannot be solved, all right? So let's see the next one. Now, twin, when we use this application of ratios in milk and water-based questions, what happens? 20 liters of milk, let's take one example, when added to a 60 liter milk and water solution, it increases the concentration by the same percentage points as decreased by adding 30 liters of water to the same solution what is the ratio of milk and water initially? So ideally, I want to again use the ratios only. What I'm saying is, I'm having a 60 liter solution, all right? This 60 liter has both milk and water. So if it is having X liters of milk, it will be considered to be X out of 60. If it is having 10 liters of milk, I will say it is 10 out of 60. If it is 20, I'll say it is 20 out of 60. But when I say it is X, it is X out of 60. So X stands for your milk. 60 stands for milk plus water, all right? So this is given as the concentration. Concentration word in any such problem based on milk and water stands for purity level of a solution. What do you mean by purity level of a solution? It means out of 100 liter of milk and water, if I say it is 60% concentrated, it means your 60 liter is your milk and 40 liter is your water. So when I use this statement, 
it i am adding some milk to it 20 liters of milk is added so this solution is now changed to x plus 20 all right because you are adding milk now because you are adding milk the total will also change so the total will become what 80 so 60 becomes 80 and earlier concentration is x is out of 60 so it says x out of 60 x plus 20 out of 80 so i can say this difference will tell me the increase in the concentration all right and the question says this increase is equal to the decrease that is happening by adding 30 liters of water to the same solution what do you mean by same solution in this if you add 30 liters of water it means in other layman language i'll say i'm diluting the solution because i'm diluting the solution this x will remain as it is now it is out of 60 but if you add water you dilute the solution this will become x out of 90 all right and this difference will tell me the decrease in the concentration so if i just say zero gets cancelled on both the sides ultimately i'll find out the value of x so it is x plus 20 by 8 plus x upon 9 is equal to x upon 6 plus x upon 6 will make it x upon 3 all right so if you just solve this what will happen is effectively the calculation this is 9x plus 8x will give you 17x plus 180 upon 72 is equal to x upon 3, 324 are. So your x happens to be 180 by 7. This 180 by 7 is your milk. Alright, 180 by 7 is your milk. Out of 60, if your 180 by 7 represents milk, can I say remaining 240 by 7 will represent water? So the final ratio happens to be the one where I can say milk to water that is 180 by 7 to that of 240 by 7 will actually give you the ratio as 3 is to 4. So the ratio in which milk and water were initially present in the solution is given as 3 is to 4. Four. All right. So two learning parts. Concentration stands for purity level of a solution. When you are solving a question, always ensure that it is taken as a part of a ratio. No need to use allegations as of now in these kind of problems. Correct. So let's take up the next one. The next one says a concentration increasing machine removes water at a constant rate. So concentration is increasing. It means at every point of time, the purity level will increase. It takes 10 hours to completely remove water from a 100 liter solution of 60% concentration. What do you mean by this line? 100 liter solution is 60% concentrated. So 60 liter is your milk, 40 liter is your water. To remove this 40 liter, you will take a time of how much? 10 hours. So 40 liter of water can be removed in 10 hours. So I can say water removal rate will be 4 liters per hour. All right. This is what I mean by the first line of the question. It takes 10 hours to completely remove water. You are removing water from a 100 liter solution of 60% concentration. So 60 liter is your milk, 40 liter is your water. Now it says for how long must it operate? For how long means it is asking about the time. For how long must it operate? on a 90 liter solution of milk and water in the ratio 4 is to 5. So if 90 liter solution in the ratio 4 is to 5, so 40 liter happens to be your milk and 50 liter happens to be your water. So how long must it operate on a 90 liter solution of milk and water in the ratio 4 is to 5 so that the resultant can be converted in the ratio 20 is to 19. So try to understand the meaning of the question. You have milk and you have water. Initially, you have this is 40 liter, this is 50 liter. What will happen after one hour? Milk will remain as it is, 40, because you want to improve the concentration. So, obviously, the water will be drained out. After one hour, water removal rate is defined as what? 4 liters per hour. So, 50 after one hour will become what? 46. 40 is to 46 will be 20 is to 23. Not interested. After two hours, 40 will remain as it is. 46 will become 42. 40 is to 42 will give you 20 is to 21. Again, not interested. After 3 hours, this will remain 40, but this 42 will become 38. Now, if you try to see 40 
is to 38 after 3 hours can also be defined as 20 is to 19. So, how, how long it requires to become 20 is to 19? So, if you try to see to become 20 is to 19, you need a time of how much? 3 hours. So, the correct answer becomes 3 hours. All right. So, when you are doing this kind of questions again, try to ensure that in the exams, most of the cases, it is not a time consuming question, but it is more tricky in terms of understanding the level of difficulty and to ensure that it can be used as a proper application of a ratio. It's fine. Thank you. Now, if we have to involve average as a part of arithmetic to get these kind of questions solved, I'll use a very simple Lehman example to understand. What happens is I'm having three numbers, let's say A, B and C. And the average of three numbers happens to be 45. Average of A and B happens to be 48 and average of B and C happens to be 43. And we have a very simple question, what are respectively the values of A, B and C? Now this is a very basic fundamental tool because what will happen is these questions, for example in this case, A plus B plus C upon 3 is equal to 45, A plus B upon 2 is equal to 48 and so on. So we can solve the questions by using our basic knowledge of average. What we know in about average, we say average is equal to sum of the observations upon total number of observations. So when we are doing it, actually we are not using the application of average, but we are trying to make it more calculative by involving some more variables. All right. So let's try to see, can it be solved by using a simple application of average? All right. Now, please pay attention. Try to understand. It says A, B and C. What is the average 45? Correct. Try to observe the relation between the two. Who is moving? out of the group who is moving out of the group c is moving out of the group when c is moving out of the group the average is increasing average is increasing by 3 so 45 is becoming 48 so you are increasing by 3 so in a layman language a is also increasing by 3 b is also increasing by 3 so who is moving out c is moving out of the group c ke jane se 45 is becoming 48. Do logo ka average 3 se bad jata hai. To A increases by 3. B also increases by 3. To total increase kitna hua 6. Wo 6 kis me se kam hua hoga? C me se kam hua hoga. To jo C ka value hai, that is 6 less than the average. What is that? 39. That is 6 less than the average. Alright. Again, I'll repeat. A, B, C, 45. 45 is becoming 48. Increasing by 3 for A increasing by 3 for B total increasing by 6 correct 6 is increased because C is moving out the C ka jo value have that is 6 less than the average similarly compare 1 and 3 compare 1 and 3 who is moving out of the group A is moving out of the group B reduces by 2 C also reduces by 2 total reduction is 4 to wo 4 apne saath kon le gaya wo 4 apne saath A le gaya because A is moving out so, jo A ka value hai, that is 4 more than the average. What is that? 49. Correct. Average se 6 kam. Average se 4 zada. So, you are 6 less, you are 4 more. Effectively, you are 2 less. When I say you are 2 less, it means the third value has to be 2 more to ensure that you again reach to back to 45. Now, plus 4 minus 6 gives you minus 2. So, it has to be plus 2. So, this becomes what? 47. So, if you add it, the sum is what? 135 divided by 3 will give you as good as 45. Now, this is a major application where we want to say that average is a quantity whose impact is uniform on each and every variable that is present in the quantity. All right. So, let's try to see this application in the questions. Now, the question is, it says, Suraj has a certain average of runs for 12 innings. Suraj has a certain average of runs for 12 innings. All right. In the 13th inning, he scored 96 runs and his average increases by 5 runs. What is his average after 13th innings? All right. So again, means this question, if you try to see, can be solved even without knowing average because I can say for first 12 innings, the average was X. Then in the 13th innings, he scored 96. So 12 into X plus 96. And I can actually complicate the question. Now try to understand 12th 
innings, I don't know how many runs he scored. In the 13th innings, he scored 96 runs. And his overall average increases by 5 runs. Alright. So, first 12 innings, it says, the question is, what is his average after 13th innings? So, after 13, so 13th innings, my score is 96. Can I do this problem in 30 seconds? Even less than 30 seconds actually. 12th innings, May kitna score kiya? First inning, second inning, third inning, up to 12th inning ka score, mujhe nahi pata. But 13th inning ka score is 96 runs. Alright. So, har inning ka score, 5 runs se bad raha hai after scoring this 96. So, pehle 12 innings ka runs, 5 se badhega, to actual increase will be 12 into 5. What is that? 60. Or 13th innings ka score, agar 96 hai, to effectively that is 96 minus this 60 which will be considered to be the average. What is that? 36 runs. Alright. So, what we actually did was, her inning mein uska average 5-5 runs se bad raha hai. Toh, pehle 12 innings mein kitne se bad gya hooga? 60 se bad gya hooga. So, the value I, that is increasing parameter is 60. 13th innings, his score is 96. So, effectively, the average for the first 13th innings will be 96 minus 60. That will give you 36 runs. Alright. So, this is about getting a very basic example of average. Let's take up one more example. The average weight of 8 sellers of a boat increases by 1 kg when one of them weighing 56 kg is replaced by a new seller. What is the weight of the new seller? Alright, so 56 kg wala person is moving out. The N, the basic definition of average, what is that? Sum of the observations upon total number of observations. Alright, so this n in the question that is a total number of observation is fixed, it is 8. So, 56 kg wala is moving out of the group and some new person is joining because of which 8 people, this 8 remains constant, so because of which 8 people average is increasing by what? 1 kg. 8 logo ka average weight, agar 1 kg se bad raha hai, to 1 kg sabhi ka bad raha hai, to the total increase is accumulating to what? 8. And it also gives one more indication, that if 8 people average is increasing by 1, so the person who is coming in is having a weight which is more than the average weight. So average 56 se kitna zyada hooga? 8 logo ka weight 1 1 kg se bad na. So total increase kitna hooga? 8. So that is 56 plus 8. What is that? 64 kg. So the new person who comes in has an average weight of how much? 64 kgs. Alright. No need to solve these kind of questions. They can easily be sorted considering the very basic application of average. That is impact is uniform on each and every variable. Art logo ka average 1 kg se badhta hai. Matlab 1 kg sabhi ka badhta hai. Toh total kitna badha? 8. मतलब जो नया पर्सन आया उसका वेट 56 से ज्यादा है कितना ज्यादा जितना इन लोगों का बढ़ा तो नया पर्सन का वेट कितना हो जाएगा 64 kgs is this fine clear let's see the next one